Hey guys, it's Zero here. I thought I'd do a line art tutorial because, well, I figured it's about time I start doing some tutorials. And, um, I figured the best one to start off first is the line art. So, to clarify one thing, this isn't the only way to do line art. This is just my personal way of doing line art. Um, consider this more like a kind of like a guide to help you like get maybe started if my line if the way I do line art works for you that's good if not then maybe it helps you figure out how to do your own line art I don't know okay let's get started first off we have sketch this is um, my tutorial girl and I, I gotta figure out a name for her because I just created her <laughs> so I just gotta figure out a name for her so like everything, like I got a sketch, start with the construction, then you get the refined sketch, and then with the refined sketch, I turn on the opacity, I don't have a set opacity, I just go with whatever works. I, if you want like a, like a rough, I probably keep it between like 20 to 30 percent. And uh, I always have my sketch like this nice blue, because it's a lot easier to see the line art when I'm uh, line arting, but um, you know, it just like I said, whatever works for you. Go back to the capacity. Then I create a new folder, new layer, and I have the layer select on selection source. Now, what that does is when you have, so let's go with like this, this. When you have like a line art, the when you have like use the wand and you're on a different layer it pretty much pretty much whatever's like either in the folder or on the layer that's where what the wand would use like as like kind of use that like that as sort of like a working layer instead of like the layer you're working on if that makes any sense not really good at explaining stuff like that now there are really a few tools people use for liner the main three are the pen the airbrush and the brush. I personally like to use the brush tool because let's get a close-up shot. So when I use the brush, I like it the way it like points out. And but like the pen, I also like using that for like whenever I want to just do like some like maybe cartoony lines, like whenever I want to do like some like real fun quick chibis. I don't really like using the airbrush that much as a, as a, uh, let's turn on the other one. I really don't like using the airbrush as a line art, but, although that does look nice, I'm not gonna lie, that looks pretty nice. Nice, but, maybe if I ever want to do, like, maybe a painting or something, I'd probably use the airbrush, but I mostly like using the brush. So here are my settings for my brush. And I have the stabilizer when I'm doing like pretty much everything except for the hair. I have it on set like on S2 and S3. And the stabilizer, what it does is like here's it on uh, zero. It's pretty just like here, just hand movement and all that. But when you have it like say like 15. It's a little bit stable. It's a little more um, stable. But when you get to like the S section, say like S7, it like really kind of like lags. But that's the point. So you can get more of a more of a, a smoother, crisper line. Now seven is a little too much of a dra of a lag for me. So I go to two to three whenever I do like the face, the eyes, and practically everything. But when I do the hair, I go to like S4 or 5. So, basically I just grab the brush and then I just I have my brush size to like between 2 to 3. And that depends on also your canvas size as well. Because this is a pretty big canvas. This is the size of a like I believe this is the size of a piece of paper. Yeah, this is the size of a piece of paper, and it's on, um, uh, 
Oh wow, that's 350. That should just, just be 300. It should be 300 DPI. Not, uh, 350. <laughs> My bad. That is way too big. But, usually I like to keep between 300 and 350 for my pictures. And then, um... Yeah, I just start... Tracing over... This sketch. There's really... Now, I do this a lot too, is that I press the undo button because I am very picky when it comes to my line art. <laughs> I am, uh, that's just the way I roll. And uh, in a lot of my tutorials, you see me basically going like crazy, like eee. I like to attack line art in different angles because I draw kind of like more like a slight diagonal, diagonal in a way, which is weird. I don't know why, maybe that would change if I ever get a different tablet or something, but as it stands now with the, the pen, like, like just a regular the pen tablet, uh, I just pretty much just draw out a diag- I just like, I guess I just like drawing out a diagonal. This is like way too- that's way too big! Here we go. So, um, I'm gonna go into speed paint mode here, and then I will come back. Although, one thing I should actually say first, that when it comes to line art also, I use multiple layers for my line art. Like, I always have a separate layer for eyes, and a separate layer for the whole, like, body and all that, and a separate layer for hair, and in case there's, like, little items in, like, the background and stuff, which this one doesn't, well, I guess this one, I guess this, the, the giant, we'll just use the giant pen as an example giant tap of pen as an example, I would use that as a separate layer as well. But most of the time, I usually like to keep at least three layers of line art. I use <laughs> a lot of layers for when it comes to uh, line art. Um, but that's just a personal thing. And the main reason I keep it in the folder is because when the whole folder is on selection source, then I don't have to keep going like if I'm on a, like I just said, like a, do this, and then I like I need to, and I accidentally did like on this layer, I wanted to do that. So what I usually do is like I this and here we go, and uh, try to erase it if that makes any sense, and uh. It just makes it a lot easier, easier when you're like, especially when you're working with the hair, when you want to get like the face and the, when you want to get like the face stuff out of the hair and all that stuff, like the little crossover lines. But uh, that's just what I do. So um, I'm gonna finish light ironing her, and I'll come back and maybe pump in once in a while, while to tell you what I do for some things. Because there's also um the uh this one, the line work layer, but I'll get to that. When we get to like stuff that need like the necklace and the ginormous pen right here. But for now, let's just get through this part.
actually forgot to record, but uh, I actually also forgot something on her as well. Forgot something in the original sketch as well, so this works out. Is that some people do tend to use vec the vector layer right here for line art. I personally don't like using that because, uh, it, to me, it takes a lot longer to do it, and um, I just think it's just a lot easier just to draw it yourself than to uh, than just to just then just to do the vector layer because you're just constantly editing. So, um, yeah, the vector layer is not really my expertise. I just prefer using it for, um, whenever I have to use, like, straight, st for whenever I have to get, like, a straight edge like this, or when I'm having to do, like, a uh, big, when I have, like, big items like this, like the, the her tablet pen right here, which, goddamn, that part took forever. Uh, that is pretty much all there is to it, so I guess I should get to, uh, this part as well. And, uh, to color the line art, it's really not that difficult. It, what it really does is that you go to, you go to your folder, in my case, you don't have to have your line art multiple layers. If you have multiple layers like me, I suggest you put them in the folder, so then when you preserve opacity, which is when you lock the layers, and when you lock it, whatever layer that has, like, stuff on it, you can only, like, get a color. You can only, like, draw on, like, that, on uh, what, that, that's already been drawn. If, you know what I'm, if you know what I'm saying, it's like, you can only draw what was already drawn on there before you lock it. It's the best way I can put it for you. Now, if you have a... Oh, wait, first things first. Now, if you have, like, a, a line art layer like this, you go to the color layer, and then you just go... You go... Blah, blah. You go to line work, click the color button, grab a color, and then you just click the lines, and there you go. However, that takes forever for me, so whenever I'm done with it, I merge the line art layer with a regular layer, it's so I can just color it, because that's to me that's just easier. But it's say if you have like a uh, JPEG image like this, and no, I did not draw this. Uh, this was done by someone else. I'm not entirely sure who. I have this for a while, so I'm not sure who draw this. But uh, say you want to color. Uh, say if you want to color this. If you go to layer luminosity to transparency, one, you can finally color underneath it, and two, when you lock the layer, you can color it. Yay! However, uh, I guess a little quick tip it if you don't have that function. Function, I'm not sure what you do for JPEG images, but for me, but for like if you drew your layer on this, if you create like a new layer and uh, clip it, which means like anything you draw on the, what the, heck? Oh, the, the screen oh, first unlock it um, whatever you draw on this layer it will only show when you clip it what you drew underneath it that's uh, another way people like to call a liner but I prefer the preserve opacity one so that is um, uh, all I have to say on that that. Uh, thank you for sticking for my tutorial. I hope this helped you in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I hopefully I'll make new tutorials sometime in the future. Until then, bye guys. See you in the next video.